In a few hours' time, the moon will turn a deep shade of red because of a rare combination of events. The super blood moon occurs when the moon reaches its closest point to Earth at the same time as it goes into a lunar eclipse. The event should be visible right across the country, but the east coast is expected to get the best view. Let's get more on this now with Dr. Rebecca Allen, astronomer at Swinburne University. Dr. Rebecca Allen, thank you so much for your time. Why is it being called a super flower blood moon? So yes, there's a lot to unpack and that is quite a lengthy name, but it's a super moon because as you said, the moon is at its closest point in its orbit to Earth and it's also coinciding with a lunar eclipse. Now when the moon is its closest point to Earth, it is a little bit larger because it's closer. We can see, we can't see with the naked eye, but it is a tiny bit larger. But what's exciting is normally when we have a full moon, it is actually about 20% brighter. So if you go outside actually, you know, right about now and within the next hour, you're going to see a really bright full moon. Now, the reason it's called a blood moon is because as the moon goes into a total lunar eclipse, that's when it's passing into the darkest part of the Earth's shadow because the, uh, the sun is lined up just behind the earth and the moon is aligned just right that we get that shadow crossing over the moon and the word blood because the reddish hue as the light of the sun passes through earth's atmosphere and is actually refracted and bent just like we see sunsets on earth as it goes through all that atmosphere casting all that wonderful light onto the moon and then of course lastly the word flower in there has to do with the traditional cultures, um, uh, as was mentioned earlier, of the indigenous peoples across the world. And specifically, this term comes from North America, when Native Americans would use the cycle of the moon to really track the progress of the seasons. And so in May in North America, you're getting a lot of wildflowers blooming. So it is a super flower blood moon because of physical and astronomical reasons, but also cultural reasons. Yeah, it's um, such a fascinating phenomenon. Um, we were just seeing a live picture from, mm. I think, Sydney's northern beaches, and the moon looks large, but it's probably hard to tell exactly what the colour is right now. How vibrant will that colour be once it occurs? Mm. That's a fantastic question. So it all has to do with the fact that the moon and the earth are not perfectly aligned. And that's why total lunar eclipses are more rare than partial lunar eclipses. And just depending on exactly where the moon falls in the earth's shadow, that, that dictates how much of the earth's atmosphere will be reflected onto the moon. But it also has to do with the amount of aerosols, just like we know that particulates in our atmosphere cause you know these vibrant, colorful sunsets the same thing happens for the shade and color that we'll see on the moon. So for this, for this eclipse, because the moon is not fully passing into the darkest part of the Earth's shadow for a very long time, it's only going to be about a 14-minute eclipse. And so I think we can expect that it won't be a deep, dark shadow that covers the moon, but more of a lighter gray. But the color, whether it's orange or red, we'll have to wait and see just how, how much uh, hue, hue we get with that. And do you know which spots along the East Coast will be the best viewing? So this is what's spectacular, is that Australia, the East Coast, really mid to the East Coast of Australia, all the way up, you know, up to northern Queensland is well placed to get to see the full glory of this eclipse. So whether you're down in Tasmania or whether you're here in Melbourne, depending on the weather, somebody has to tell the clouds to move out of the way, um, all the way up to the north coast, you should be able to get a really good view. So how often does something like this occur? So if people do miss it tonight, when's, when's the next time they'll see one? Yeah. So... This is, again, it's special because it's not just a total lunar eclipse, which usually happen every few years, but it coincides with the super moon. So the moon is in its closest point to Earth. And the last time one of those happened was in 2018. So if you missed tonight, you know, no dramas. There's always some fun stuff going on up in the sky. And you can usually catch a partial lunar eclipse at least one time a year. But to get something like this is going to be every few years. Dr. Rebecca Allen, we hope that those clouds part for you in Melbourne so you can get out and see it. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. <laughs>